The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Tonight on DC News Now at 6, new details about that Virginia plane crash after a sonic boom was heard in the DMV when an unresponsive pilot had entered the district's airspace. And four adults found shot in Maryland early this morning. What do we know about that case tonight? And stretching your dollar in nowhere other than the great outdoors. So look at the best ways to enjoy parks right here in the DMV. Good evening and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 6. I'm Ben Dennis. We are experiencing some severe weather forecasts across the DMV for tomorrow. Our meteorologist Scott Sumner is here to give us a look at what we can expect. Hey Scott, tell us. Yeah, absolutely. We'll break it down right now though, Ben, that things are looking pretty good and pretty quiet. We'll take a look at our radar here and you can see quite nicely that take you back to 1155 this morning. There were a couple of showers that popped up and moved across portions of the viewing area. As you can see here, uh, a live look in at Annapolis and what's going on. Very dry outside at the moment. As a matter of fact, whatever showers did fall didn't last too long. I did expect that today, and we talked about that last night when I was with you. So overall, things are looking pretty quiet right now. And as you can see, our Metrocast, it's going to be uh, dropping out of the 80s at 7 p.m. and into the 70s around 9 and 11 p.m. However, this is just the quiet before the storm because my eyes are now looking and shifting out towards the west over towards Indiana, Ohio, as well as portions of Kentucky. We have this storm system, which I've been talking about since yesterday, and we have been talking about here in the weather department since late last week, that that would be the weather a factor in our play and coming to play in our weather here as we go into tomorrow. Now, right now, the severe weather again is out here towards the Ohio Valley, but it does shift further east. We'll talk about a breakdown of the timing of the storms and what to expect with them coming up. That could be the headline tomorrow's severe weather. Thank you, Scott. We are learning more about that flight that led to a sonic boom right here in the DMV. The National Transportation Safety Board released its preliminary report this week. Our Lex Juarez takes a deeper look inside. Right, well, this report is actually giving us a better timeline of exactly what led up to the crash, but it's still not clear exactly what was going on inside of that plane. Now we know from a flight map that the NTSB has shown in their report that this flight was taking off from Tennessee around 115. That was the last time it took off from the ground. Uh, and this was the first stop on the plane's course as it was headed towards Long Island and where the three passengers were picked up. Now at this point, the pilot was still communicating with air traffic control about the flight path. The last time that he did respond to air traffic control was 10 minutes later at 125. Now the report goes on to say that the plane did make it to the Long Island destination, but never landed or dropped altitude. Rather, that plane turned around and started heading southwest. For about an hour, it continued on that flight path without changing altitude. Now at 320, that's when the fighter jets were able to make their way to the plane. They did try to intervene. The pilot not responding to multiple radio transmissions, flare deployments and other intercepting techniques such as that sonic boom that we did hear here in the DMV. And two minutes later at 322, the plane spiraled to the ground in a nosedive. Now the report says that there was a crater where the plane hit the ground. The cockpit completely destroyed and pieces of the plane were scattered around. We also know that all four people on board did die in the crash. At this point, some of the details that we're hoping to get from the NTSB as they continue doing their investigation is learning more about what was going on inside of the plane and what was um, the pilot's condition at the time that this was going on. Now, there was a cockpit radio that was supposed to be recording audio there in the cockpit and inside of the plane that was on the plane on board before the plane crashed. That's something that the NTSB is still trying to locate. In Washington, I'm Lex Suarez, DC News Now. And we continue tonight with news out of Prince George's County. Police are investigating a shooting that injured four people early this morning. PG County police said they received a call for shots fired just before 2 a.m. When they arrived on scene of that shooting on Stamp Road, they found four adults, two male, two female, injured but in stable condition. They are all being treated tonight. We'll provide more information as we learn more. We're learning more about a local airport fire that damaged at least nine planes early yesterday morning. A press release from the town of Leesburg 
says that the fire happened shortly after 2 a.m. Saturday at the Leesburg Executive Airport and inside a hangar there. County Fire and Rescue put out the flames. It's not known what caused them to break out. No injuries, thankfully, were reported, and the airport has been reopened for business. Meanwhile, in the district, D.C. police have identified a man who was killed in a shooting early Monday morning. Metro police say they found 30-year-old George Johnson of Northwest heavily injured on I Street Northwest, as they said. He was found dead on scene. MPD is offering up to $25,000 for any tips that lead to an arrest. And developing in Maryland, Frederick County Executive Jessica Fitzwater is looking to combat a controversial topic, data centers. The news comes after one local advocacy group filed a lawsuit against the county. Our Michaela Newton covers the area for us and has the details. In a press conference Thursday, Frederick County Executive Jessica Fitzwater announced the creation of a data center's work group. This community-led, government-informed work group will consider the issues surrounding data centers in an open and transparent public process and issue recommendations for the county council to consider. Quantum Loophole is one of the latest data centers being built in the county. However, one advocacy group, the Sugarloaf Alliance, filed a lawsuit when it comes to the development of these projects. The alliance says the county needs to release the public records related to the Sugarloaf Plan. The Sugarloaf Plan is a rezoning plan of Sugarloaf Mountain, which would pave the way for more development in the county, which could lead to additional data centers. Steve Black, the president of the Sugarloaf Alliance, sent a statement to DC News Now saying, quote, the release records prove that the area removed from the Sugarloaf Plan in 2021 was intended for Amazon Web Services data centers. Frederick County and Amazon engaged in a highly secretive effort to place numerous data centers into southern Frederick County while actively blocking public scrutiny. Stephen Finlay, president of the Sugarloaf Citizens Association, another advocacy group, says while he believes data centers in the county will take up farmland and causes environmental damage, he applauds the county executive for taking steps in the right direction. We support uh Jessica Fitzwater's action and, and hope that will be one step, the first step to a uh, more careful consideration of how this data center is going to be built over the, the next two, three years. The work group will consist of about 12 people from the city, county and community leaders reporting in Frederick County, Maryland. I'm Michaela Newton for DC News Now. Some information tonight from Metro riders beginning this week. More trains and bus service because of improvements made to three train lines and almost 70 bus routes. DC News Now's Tosin Fakile has the information you need before that work week starts. With improvements starting Monday, Metro says it will have 58% more trains running on the weekdays compared to last July and provide 73% more train trips. Now, this will be the start of Metro rolling out its 10th service improvement since last summer. Starting tomorrow, Orange Line trains will operate every 10 minutes from open until 9.30 p.m. and every 15 minutes after 9.30. The Orange Line customers remember there is ongoing construction work on that line until July 16th. Blue and Silver Line trains will run every 12 minutes from open till 9.30 p.m. and every 15 minutes after 9.30. Now, when it comes to Metro buses, customers will see improvements on 68 routes. Some of those Metro bus service improvements include in the district, Metro's improving route B2, midday, evening, and weekend frequency to every 12 minutes to better connections between Northeast and Southeast DC. In Maryland, they're adding service to new destinations along the Landover Road and Martin Luther King Jr. Highway corridors and over in Virginia Metro's extending service along Columbia Pike from Skyline City to National Landing that's going to go every 12 minutes. Now also starting Monday is simpler fares which gets rid of some morning and rush hour peak fares. People who take the train will have one distance based fare on weekdays before 9:30 p.m. after 9:30 and on weekends, customers will still pay that $2 flat fare per trip. Now, regular regular Metro bus fares stay at $2 per trip and on Metro access, the maximum fare Metro says that fare will be reduced to $4 per trip in the studio. I'm Tosin Fikile for DC News Now. Our thanks to Tosin there. Well, the fighting gloves were on this weekend in DC. The 31st annual National Capital Barbecue Battle 
in the district and the streets were packed with folks looking to get a taste of that event. Well, it was a chance to taste barbecue from district restaurants and other sponsors, food, musical acts and more. It was help. It was an event to help rather cap off the early days of summer. We spoke to attendees about what they liked the most about the event. This is what they had to say. The smell of barbecue is amazing. Love it. And just having everybody out, the weather, you couldn't beat it. So it's a great day in D.C. What tent do you like the best today? The Kit Kat one. Kit Kat one? Kit Kat one. Kit Kat one. Yeah. I love Kit Kat. <laughs> Was there a barbecue Kit Kat? Something I don't know about? Well, DC News Now also had a booth at the event. If you made it, just stop by and say hello. We certainly appreciated that warm welcome. Still to come on your news tonight, a look at new Metro bus program designed to help passengers feel safe during late night rides. And later, we're taking a trip to Frederick County to check out their 10th annual Pride Month celebration. All right, and a live look in here at our weather. It's not too bad right now. We're looking fairly quiet in the district. You see some cumulus clouds, some fair weather cumulus ones out there. We'll see some uh, real uh, severe weather potentially tomorrow across the region. The sky will look completely different. I'll have the details coming up.